Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In the last video, we completely disassembled our 454 Big Block Chevy, but it's now time to prepare everything for the rebuild, which means cleaning up the block. We need to clean all the parts we're going to use again. We need to clean out that oil pan. I got some work to do on the cylinder heads, even though we're not going to use them. And I'm going to do some modifications to things like the intake manifold and the pistons. So stay tuned. I'm going to do a small modification to my intake manifold because I run an open spacer you can see that these areas right there are well essentially 90 degrees to the flow uh, to the airflow from the throttle body so I am going to try to smooth these out and shape them just so the, the airflow will have an easier transition going through small little detail which probably is worth nothing but pfft, I want to do it And this is exactly what I was going for. You can see it has a smooth transition down, smooth there, right? So when I put my spacer on, which is about there, yeah, about there, you can see it just, it doesn't hit a roadblock. It will just hit these, I guess, radius corners and then blow down. Small, small little details that might add up to maybe one horsepower. <laughs> Whatever. I like it. I'll be using a Molly piston. You can see the part number right here. It's a very nice piston. It has a full coating. It also has a skirt coating here, which is great. However, there are some very sharp edges, particularly right here. And these sharp edges and points, they can create hot spots, which can lead to detonation. We don't want that. So I've taped up a piston just to protect it. And we are going to file down these edges using a file and a Dremel. And the idea is to blend them and round these edges off so that we eliminate those hot spots, and that should be more resistant to detonation. This spot right here, unfortunately there's not much you can do about it because it's so thin. So all I did was remove the high points and sharp edges, but I still feel this is a vulnerability spot on the piston, but what can you do? The rest of it though is smoothed out and you can see I focused a lot right here, which uh, you know had those really sharp multiple angles and, and different kind of points. So all that is gone. I feel like we are safe now. So on to the next seven.
So our block prep is done for now. There is some machining to be done, so I didn't go crazy with chasing threads or doing a full cleaning. I just focused on deburring and helping with oil flow. So I'll show you what I did. Starting with the main caps, you can see I polished up the sides, which is just to get rid of this casting coarseness. Uh, not that it's going to do anything really for strength, but that should help a little bit with oil flow. I also cleaned up some of the edges here. I went around all the sharp edges and just cleaned that off because some of these knife edges can induce cracks and we don't want that obviously. Uh, I went into the inside of the block just on these edges again, cleaned up the sharp edges, smoothed them out a little bit. Nothing major, you know, things like that. Down in here, there was some ugly flashing from the casting, and I just got rid of that. The front of the engine, again, I just went around these edges right in here, just to make sure there's nothing sharp. This edge right here, there's a big ridge on it. I just smoothed that out, but I maintained some of the ribbing right in here in case there was any strength in that. Basically, I did the same thing here. Where there was a big casting mound right in here, I just flattened that out a little bit, smoothed it out. And again, right in here. On this main, with the oil, I wanted to smooth out and radius these edges right here. Because that's going to promote good oil flow. And I think that's a good thing. I did the same thing right in here. And then right here, there was some big ugly casting flashing in here. So I just took that down and smoothed it all out. Looks a lot better. With the block flipped over, you can see we did some work in the oil galley. Took out all that ugly flashing in here and smoothed it out around the edges. And that is to help with oil drain back because we want the oil in the oil pan to go through the engine and not just pooling up down in here and getting stuck. So I think that's a good thing to do. And then I just cleaned up some of the passages where the coolant goes through because there's some really ugly edges uh, from the casting. I didn't like that and I just wanted to clean that up a little bit. So nothing major, little things. And honestly, I would have never gone this far if it wasn't for suggestions from our friend Scotty. So I just want to shout out to him. So thank you. And yeah, block is kind of ready. Obviously, got to strip the paint off it still. But we're going to do that closer to when the engine's going to be done because I want to try to prevent any rust on this because it's going to be sitting for, for at least a few months. So <laughs> yeah, I want it to be in good condition. And speaking of preventing rust, I did go over the whole thing with some WD-40 just to try to, again, keep the moisture off of it and prevent rust. I was test fitting my Brodix Race Right cylinder heads and I found a couple of very small issues. One, there are some very sharp edges in the casting where it's been machined, uh, like right here where the um, temperature sensor would go and, you know, up here where the head bolts or the head studs are going to go. And I spent a lot of time <laughs> cleaning up those edges on the engine block, so I'm wondering if I should do the same thing to the cylinder heads. I was looking down the cylinder bores to see how well the combustion chambers fit and to see if there's any shrouding of the valves. The exhaust valve is fine, but the intake valve, there's definitely shrouding around in here. Way down there, the bore is actually overhanging over the seat of the uh, intake. Now, these heads are obviously designed around Mark IV, uh, 454 blocks, so I'm not concerned about the valve opening and closing, but because the cylinder bore is overhanging a little bit in this area right here it's shrouding the valves meaning it's obstructing some of the airflow there is something i can do to help remedy that to unshroud the valves i would need to notch the block just a little bit where the intake valve is but i'm not going to do that freehand at the very least i would need to have the head gasket and use that as a guide to see where i can actually do my grinding and I don't know if I feel comfortable doing that myself, and I don't even know if I'm going to get the engine builder to do that, but I do feel like there would be some improvement in flow on the intake side, and that might be worth some power. Now keep in mind, it will drop your compression ratio a little bit, and I think that's probably, like if I'm at 10.4, I might drop to 10.35, so I don't think that would be too much of an adverse effect. 
On the intake port of the cylinder heads, there is a ridge right here where it goes from CNC ported to the original casting. And it's not huge, but I can feel it. And that is right in the path of the airflow. So it comes in and it will have to hit that ridge. And it's not too bad on the uh, three and seven ports, but on five and on number one, it is quite significant. So I am going to take my die grinder and just smooth that out with a sanding wheel. Nothing major, just little details. On the exhaust port, once again, there is a ridge right here where it goes from the casting to the CNC porting. It's not huge, but I don't like it. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to fix that because I can't really get, I don't have anything to grind away in from the, uh, the port from in here. So I'd have to go through the bottom and I really don't want to touch the valve seats because I don't want to damage them. So I might have to leave this. So we got the blending of the ports done. Nothing major. It just gives a nice transition instead of having a ridge there. Also, I did uh, take off some of the edges up around in here, just mainly so I don't cut myself. This cylinder head didn't require nearly as much work to blend. I'm happy to say I actually got into the exhaust port and blended this all in. It's all nice and smooth and transitioned really nicely, so I'm happy about that. You can see I taped the hell out of the valve seats to make sure I didn't do any damage. But I'm going to leave it taped up for now just in case I go back in here at all. I feel like this spot right here could be a bit of a restriction. Maybe that could be blended. I don't know. I'll have to do some research, but for now, I think we're going to leave it as is. Since it's a nice day... We're going to clean the parts and I use this spray nine grease off. It actually works really good. Oops, I don't spill it all over the place. Rinse the water. We have an assortment of clean parts. I would say this stuff works pretty good. I'd give it a try if I were you. See the oil pan, nice and clean. Yeah, everything's looking good. I have a few more parts to do, but at least it gets a nice chunk of it done. The cylinder heads I will not be reusing, but I do want to reuse the tool steel retainers. So I'm going to put back on the original retainers and hopefully I have the tools to do this on the bench. <laughs> I may not have made the most efficient burn in this in the combustion chamber. So I'm measuring the install height with the old retainers so I can shim it so that these heads are in a 
position that I can sell them um, and I know what all the install heights are. It is 218. So I need to add a 60 thou shim, a 15 thou shim, and my 60 thou locator. That's a lot of shims, boy. All right. You can see the difference between the tool steel retainer and the old steel retainer. Much lighter. Well, guys, that will do it for this video. I hope some of you guys learned something along the way. I know in the process of making this video, I sure learned a lot. And I hope that you can apply some of these tips to your engine build. Now, is it worth it? Well, I don't know if anybody has done any back-to-back -back scientific testing to prove how much it's worth, but it's got to be worth something since engine builders have been doing it for decades. In terms of strength and reliability, well, I sure hope it's worth something. In terms of power, meh, I'm thinking zero to five horsepower. But what do you guys think? Leave a comment. Let us know what you would think all these things did. You know, the intake manifold, the cylinder heads. That's probably going to be worth the most power. The oiling, uh, the block modifications, all this stuff. Is it worth anything at all? I don't know. Let us know. Maybe some of you guys have some experience of your own. Of course, if you like this video, please leave a like. Be sure to subscribe so you can follow along with the engine build. Now I have a few more pistons to do, so I'm going to get back to work on that. Thanks for watching.